What advice would you give future nursing students that want to come on the trip? I think flexibility is key. Um, you never know what each day is going to bring, and it's really important to be able to adapt to any situation that you get put in. It's, a, it's definitely a learning experience. Um, be open-minded. Um, be excited to go. Kripa, so how did this whole DR trip come about? What did you hope to achieve from this experience? Going into this experience, our overarching goal was to experience healthcare from a different cultural perspective, particularly like one that was outside of the United States. I think one, maybe not for all of us, we're not all Spanish speaking, but it was really interesting to be able to practice our Spanish speaking skills, even though they were lacking. But we were able to build on a lot of our abilities kind of intimidating at first, but I think as the week went on, we became more comfortable and were able to somewhat communicate with the patients that we saw. Um, interacting with the patients from um, another country, like everyone said, and um, utilizing our skills, becoming more independent in the clinical setting was um, one of our major goals. Accomplishments. I think another big goal that we had about it was like gaining a better understanding of like the sustainability of missionary trips and like how effective they are in really improving the health of vulnerable populations in the world. Because like you can learn about it in the textbook, but once you're there, it's a whole different experience. Yeah. And we, de I think we definitely achieved that goal of like learning about sustainability and learning about vulnerable populations. And um, another important goal was resource allocation. Going into this trip, we had such limited resources, and that's another problem with sustainability. I mean, there was only so much to go around and the community had a lot, a lot of needs. So we kind of, I guess, had to manage our resources and make sure that we were evenly distributing everything that we uh, took with us. Could you describe a typical day working as a student nurse in DR? Well, my watch alarm <laughs> would go off at, what, like 6.45? And everybody would hear it because there was no ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone shared one room. So we would get up, we would shower, and by the time you were at breakfast, you ate breakfast and you were ready to go to load up the bins that you had sorted out the night before, to put on the pickup trucks that you also sat in, took a ride through the town to get to where the clinics were going to be held, which is usually, which was usually a, either a church or a local school or just a room, a small enough room, but a large enough room to hold like three or four stations. And they were like typically be in a room like 30 to 40 people. So sometimes there was a lot of chaos and mayhem, <laughs> just trying to get medications, trying to get patients in, trying to get patients out, seeing everybody, making sure you're only seeing the people who had tickets. That was a bigger problem. Like people would come in with families, and they only had one ticket. And it was kind of like an ethical issue we encountered too, where we had never been in a situation where we had to decide: okay, do you treat just the patient, or do you treat the whole family who needs your help? So that was like a really interesting experience. Sometimes we'd have to like. All the time, we saw more than 100. Yeah, yeah. we saw at least 100 people a day. The tickets were um, they were bought by the patients, but they were very minimal that they could afford such. Right, it was like 10 pesos. 10 pesos. Which is like, of like, you know, well, 5 cents. Yeah. yeah, and the money that they spent on the tickets went back to their community, so it was a good way to collaborate. 
how does this put how it put the four years of education that you learned in any American school as an actual set and actually be not in a clinical setting, but in a you know, real world real world setting, not in a hospital or community setting? Uh, I think in nursing did teach you a lot of judgment and things like that. And I feel as though being there and not having the resources that we're used to having here in the United States really pushed you to think really hard and reflect on everything that you learned um, and kind of pull from you know your experiences as well. Because I mean, I grew up in a tropical country in South America, and a lot of the things that I saw um, in DR I could relate back to my own experiences. So it just helps you to like just take everything and you know put it into trying to figure out what the problem was. Did you see any common threads or themes within healthcare of DR to the healthcare of the United States? Um access to healthcare I think is a major one that you see in both uh, in both countries. Because a lot of times uh, the where we were if we were in the rural areas, um, a lot of times they struggle because the distance to travel to go to a hospital or a clinic was far, and a lot of times if they didn't have the money, um, you know, they weren't able to get the care that they needed. And um, the same thing as it is here, where we struggle with um, people don't have transportation or money or uh, insurance, it's a lot of the same issues. Being American, um, how did it feel going back to help you know, people? It was definitely a meaningful experience going back because I was going home to where my ancestors come from and going to help the people who inhabit the same land that my parents come from. So it was definitely a much more personal and meaningful experience for me. How do you feel about sustainability? Describe your most memorable experience. My most memorable experience was when I was with um, the nurse, Kristen, and we had these two kids come in, and they were complaining of having a headache every day and feeling dizzy and nauseous. And, I mean, long story short, at the end of the day, we just realized that they were just hungry. They didn't have anything medically wrong with them. They just that's why they got headaches. And it's like, you feel, you feel, it kind of tears you up inside because you're like, I can't treat you. I can't treat your hunger. I can only tell you that I empathize and that you mean something to people in this world. And even though I can't help your hunger, I'm here to listen. I was with Dr. Sarah on our second clinic day and a woman came in with her mom and she was, you could tell from speaking to her that she there was some developmental delay. And it was clear because her mom was doing all of the answering rather than the daughter speaking for whom she was there. Um, for some, somehow, the topic came up of, um, I guess when we asked her what was her chief complaint, because that's what we were told to do because everyone came in with 101 problems and we could only solve or treat one, the one most important one. And she came in 
and she said something, and I didn't understand. I, I understood for the most part, but then she was she said something in Spanish that I didn't understand. And I think Dr. Sarah was caught off guard as well. So she had her write it down, and Dr. Sarah looked at it, and it was saying a womb, that the daughter was born without a womb, and she wanted us to fix it. And that was crazy to come to a clinic hoping that you're going to be helping these people out and this woman just wanted to be able to have the kids and she couldn't. Um, I think that same theme runs through because one of the moments I had with this one um, young man um, who was Haitian, he, was, he had recently come to the Dominican Republic from Haiti um, and during his travels, he was in an accident. Um, I had to help translate, which was difficult, but um, he needed surgery um, and help. He wasn't sure. And he was told that the cost was way too high. So he came to us um, on our last day of clinic to see if there's anything that we could do. Which, in a clinic setting, really, there's nothing you can do. It's like an outpatient care. And so, um, Amy, one of our nurse practitioners, who is fantastic, um, and through the aid of her husband as well, was able to find out that his situation was serious, that he needed to go to the hospital. But then he had some specific concerns and fears. And also what we were saying is, like, we try to help him, give him the connection to the clinic who he is, and refer and try to, you know, calm his fears and things like that, but you also end up, like you're saying, feeling bad because in the end, you're just leaving hoping, I hope he got the care that he needed. Right. That was such a big thing. And then hope that, you know, his concerns were met because um, he was truly fearful. I won't want to go into details, but uh, he was really scared and it was just like, kind of heartbreaking because especially coming having a Haitian background, wanting to uh, help him so badly and just leaving him up and saying, oh, well, this is it. Good and luck. it was, yeah, good luck. I felt so bad because it was the last day. It was like, here you go. And I really do hope you got the care you needed to help have to just walk away. And I, I just felt so bad and wishing that I, I could have done something more.